Um, the reason why we are doing this morning session is primarily for for all of us to learn, learn, and those of us who are already practicing very seriously in a proper way. Uh, for you, this is like uh, the reinforcement of your practice. Otherwise, for most of us, if you are beginners uh, to this practice, the uh, oftentimes people they come to say the dharma practice and uh, they do something but they little hear from one teacher what they again hear something from another teacher they try to put all this together and a lot of recitations so many recitations and this is important you read this this is important you read this and a lot of recitation no time for meditation so this is what happens uh, oftentimes so therefore the whenever we have such retreats we make it a point that the morning session is given such importance that people learn from the morning session the what is the quintessence of what the of the practices that we should be doing quintessence this single point of meditation renunciation bodhicitta vishwamantiness for this we must have a little bit of time to actually practice and of course alongside the creating the roadmap preparing ourselves for the main practice these things are there but not in engage in too many readings where the meanings are not reflected and the let alone experiences um, they to be invoked okay so the purpose to learn what practices must be minimum there in a practice the in our daily practice for this purpose we are doing this morning practice and uh, it's not just a ritual that we have to, we have to do this morning session no you can do on your own but collectively we do this for us for us to learn for most of us to learn how to practice on a daily basis even without a group how to do that we're going to learn it okay <clears throat> in english page three and choose for great okay uh, setting problem motivation um the which consists of three parts one the refuge field body the field and the purposes of practice are uh, the refuge field all buddhist bodhisattvas bodhisattva and his own is the dalai lama and here we have are majushiri are bhuteshvara and are thara and all the enlightened beings in front of you and uh, for the body of the field your two grandparents all of family members including children and the all sentient beings including human beings animals insects hungry goats health beings god and goddesses spirits all the beings living on a side and um, the how you visualize them that you are so loving caring to them and buddhist bodhisattva is so loving caring to you embracing you and the purpose of this practice should be to awaken the seed of buddha energy within you the seed of perfection within you that's a purpose and for that matter the main liberating path is the wisdom of emptiness but the other parts like renunciation bodhicitta generosity and so forth all these are required as um, the, re- the means to reinforce this uh, the wisdom of emptiness okay with this mind let us uh, recite verses as we recite this number one see if the meanings are reflected and where possible see if the experience are invoked and here's my great compassion you taught the macular dharma to dissolve all perverted views to you the buddha with dharma i pay homage and here's my great compassion you taught the macular dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the buddha with dharma i pay homage and here's my great compassion you taught the macular dharma to dispel all perverted views to you the buddha with dharma i pay homage Sanye Jodha Zoghe Jodha Amna Chanjo Bhadu Dhani Jabzo Jodha Dhagge Jin Sogye Vetso Nangye Dhola Vinjir Sanye Dhuvara Isho 
I go for refuge in term enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations through the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge in term enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations through the practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge in term enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By my accumulations through the practice of giving and so forth, May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. In dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme Mama, all teachers, the one who taught this speech, which is afraid of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas. Who through the knowledge of all lead here is seeking pacification to complete peace? Who through the knowledge of paths cause those helping migrants to achieve the aims of the world? And who through the possession of omniscience helps the doers expand a variety of teachings? The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit the sentient beings, the teacher, Sugada and protector to you and frustrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound who eternally shines for the forever noble light rays to you the Buddha make prostrations inspired by wisdom and compassion today in the Buddha's presence I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings okay I'm going to quickly explain this um, the uh, this mantra um, so, so the first part Om this part the um, Originally, in the the main um, mantra, it is not there, but this it's it is added for us to remind ourselves of the purpose of this the mantra. Om is constituted of three letters: A, O, Ma. Although it sounds Om, but in Sanskrit it is A, O, Ma. Combined together, it becomes Om, not Om. So this is how the language works. And then these three syllab these three letters they symbolize your body, speech and mind, the impure body, speech and mind, and also and these three letters symbolize the pure body, speech and mind of the Buddhas. When you become Buddha, your resultant Buddhahood, body, speech and mind. See in other words, this three these three letters symbolize your body, speech and mind now, which which are impure. And the resultant state when you become Buddha your body, speech, mind of the Buddha when you become Buddha. So, as you recite this, this should be a reminder for us that, okay, I should, my job is gade gade para gade para sangade bodhisattva to undertake this journey. Or, my job is to manifest this Buddha energy within me. Or, my job is to transform my body, speech, and mind into that of the purest form of the body, speech, and mind, which is the Buddha's body, speech, and mind. So this must be reminded for us. In other words, all these three things, they mean the same. It's a different way of putting at it. To transform your body, speech, and mind into that of the Buddha's body, speech, and mind. To manifest your Buddhahood full, fully. To follow this path, Gade, Gade, Bara, Gade, Bara, Sangade, Bodhisattva, so they all mean the same. Okay. So the, this is Om. And this should be reminded for us. And how our mind works, that's very the interesting, how the mind works. If you think of this, the this syllable, when you get, when you have spare time, think of it just on this om a o ma, how it symbolizes body, a body, the u, the speech, ma, my mind, and this body speech mind should be transformed into the body speech mind of the Buddha when I become Buddha. Think about this extremely clearly, crystal clear. Think about it. Later on, even if you don't specifically think about this Om, A, O, Ma, don't, don't think about early imprints are being activated. 
Well, you just say Om Ye Dharma. As you say this, early it imprints all the activity. You reap the benefit of reflecting on each of these points. This is so. This is the amazing part of the how the mind works. Okay, these are some of the techniques. For example, say when you you reflect on each of these verses so well when you have time later on in group collectively or individually when you read them slowly the meanings are well reflected in your mind this is how the mind works and then the growth transformation takes place whereas if you don't think about these but precisely each of the verses if you don't think about these and just read them the, the meanings are not at all reflected the transformation doesn't take place and the whole purpose is defeated okay then the next one ye dharma these phenomena so here this phenomena we can understand that in two contexts in general general generally um, the composite phenomena and then the more specifically the composite phenomena of miseries which we dislike ye dharma hetu is a cause the cause the prabhava arise these phenomena particularly what is implicitly taught here is the this phenomenon of suffering, phenomenon of miseries, phenomenon of the lack, lack of freedom. They arise from causes. Hetum Desham Tathagato. Hetum again the cause, but the plural form of cause, Hetum Desham, these the whatever whatever of the cause. Hetum the causes, Desham, whatever. Tathagato, uh, the Buddha, Tathagato, the one who has gone to the, the, the suchness or the thusness, the one who has gone to the ultimate. Tathagato, here with that, here with that is taught. What these causes are, the, what these causes are, what these causes are is taught by the Tathagata. Tesham, Jayo, Tesham again, like these, Jayo, whatever, whatever of these implicitly meaning the causes what of these causes nero the cessation how to bring an end how to bring to the, the the cessation of these causes causes in the context of the the causes of miseries evam thus vadi again taught mahashramana the great teacher the great seer yeswaha established us in other words the bringing end to these causes, whatever bringing end to whatever of these causes is thus taught by the great seer, and this is established. Okay, this meaning, in other words, the meanings you you see uh, you do see the meaning there in English, also in the rest of causes, but the word word meaning. And if you the say the learn the word word meaning, and when you recite it, particularly on your own, you recite it slowly, try to say the as uh, the same identify the meaning of each of the words and then see just as in english just in french when you recite it the meanings are so well reflected by reciting the sanskrit see if the same thing is hap- the same thing happened to you um, uh, there's a great benefit with the sanskrit because the same same words in sanskrit they were being said by the great teacher for example the first the buddha himself said it said these words then followed by the great teachers like Arendigarjuna, incredibly great, revered as the second Buddha, and the 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 Bodhisattva, the Aridheva, then Bodhisattva Shantideva, Acharya Chandrakirti, all these great teachers, they recited the same thing in Sanskrit. So, and there's uh, the accumulation of the blessings. Blessing doesn't mean that something is hanging in the air and then you get it. There's not the point. The point is that collectively we, s- we say something, it is a tremendous power of the air. So, say, in time, all the great teachers who said the same the, uh, verse in uh, the Sanskrit, so collectively in time, we reap the tremendous benefit. This is known as the blessings. Okay, we'll say this... Um, and that will be good when you go when you go by train, when you go by flight, when you go by bus, car, or walking in the forest. You can recite this mantra for all the beings there. For example, you go to the forest, so down there. So down there. When you go down, you will see all this grass there. So in this small plot of land, how many insects are there? How many tiny bacteria are there? For all of them, recite this mantra. 
And when you're in an airplane, from airplane, you can see the millions of people down there. For you can decide this for all of them. And under this, the sea, you from the airplane, you can see the sea there. How many creatures are there? Millions, trillions of them. Them are there. You can decide for them. And each one of them have the Buddha nature. So, so this is how we can benefit all the beings. Okay. <clears throat> Om ye dharma he to prabhavam he tum te sham datha gato hyavatat te sham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramana ye swaha Om ye dharma he to prabhavam he tum te sham datha gato hyavatat te sham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramana ye swaha Om ye dharma he to prabhavam he tum te sham datha gato hyavatat te sham chayo niroda evam vati mahashramana ye swaha Minu Thumatra all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well as taught by the great seer. Profound, peaceful, elaboration free, clear line and non composite. Such is the nectar that Dharma have discovered. Finding no one who can fathom this teaching, in silence I will return to the woods. Beyond our trends, thought and expression is the perfection of wisdom, which is unborn, unceased, and has the nature of space. It is the object of apprehension of self realized wisdom. To you, the mother of the Buddha, so the three times are beings. All composite things are impermanent. All contaminated things are the nature of suffering. All phenomena are the nature of emptiness and selflessness. Transcending soul is peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha, the Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for refuge in the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings of miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expense of billions of aeons. The Buddha does not watch the negative videos of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of the suchness that the beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of all directions to chant Laru Dharma for all bewildered miseries gloom. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Okay, the, uh, these four lines, they were taught by the great uh, Sakya, Sakya master, Sachin Kung Yingbo. Uh, page 14. <clears throat> Praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, page 14. <coughs> to the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the four destroyer, completely perfected, full of awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugada, knower of the world, supreme god of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When O Supreme amongst humans, you are born on this earth, you pace out seven strides, then set them supreme in this world. To you who are wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies, firm, uh, form supremely pure, with emotion like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, win of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like a spot this moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. Dress tree like you, the three worlds are not, incompatible wise one, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you that the Thagata I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment, 
the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one part, the sublime pure reality, to the Dharma that pacifies the prostrate. Those who are liberated and also show the path of liberation, the holy full qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha prostrate, to not commit any non virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of land, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, sea, condition, things as such. Through this merits may sentient beings attain the rank of a soul seeing, subdue the four falls, and be delivered from samsara association, perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. Okay, Heart Sutra, page 29. <clears throat> okay, um, Heart Sutra, the initially what was given there is a background. What was really happening there? Um, Buddha presiding over the congregation and uh, the Arab Lutheran shared with on the two sides, then attended by the, the monks, Bodhisattvas, the lay monks, nuns, Bodhisattvas, lay devotees there, and then the Buddha absorbed into a meditative concentration. And the Buddha, uh, say, telepathically um, the inspired or blessed Shariputra to ask question to Arab Lutheran. So, this is the first part. How should the child of the lineage practice the professional wisdom? So when you say how should the child of the, the, the lineage, so what is the meaning of the child of the lineage? Uh, this is what we need to know. Uh, the, this lineage is the lineage of the Buddhahood. And uh, for example, say in the past, the prince is considered as very important. And even if the, the prince doesn't know anything, just a small child, and the, the ministers in the form in the, the past, like 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, the ministers, they are so learned and experienced, but the, the prince is revered much, much, much more. Why? Because this prince has eventually become the king, the head of the whole empire, kingdom, and so forth. So, uh, the, this lineage is the lineage we are talking about, is the lineage of the king. So, now in this case, is the lineage of the Buddhas. So, the lineage of the Buddhas far excels the lineage of the kings. So, who is that? Who is that in that lineage? Anybody who wishes to, anybody who wishes to become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings, you automatically fall under this category of the, in this lineage of the Buddhas. So, which is the best of the lineage. So, from this point of view, we see that the the Buddhist teachings is something which is the made equally accessible to all the beings. It doesn't matter what gender, what caste, what creed you are born. But you all have the the opportunity to follow the best of the lineage that is available in the world. That is the lineage of the Buddhas. So, um, the only if you're born as a Buddhist, you're born in a Buddhist family, it doesn't mean that you are you are following the, the the best of the lineage. So only when you make the commitment, may I become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings. Only at that point you become the holder of this lineage. You become the one in the lineage of this uh, tradition of the Buddhas. So um, after making this commitment, may I become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings to entirely you to the, the, the be the holder of this lineage. What's your job? Your job is to become Buddha. How to become Buddha? By removing the metal dirts. How to remove the dirts? By resorting to the most powerful remedy, which is the wisdom of emptiness. So that is the and the question asked by Shri Buddha. How should the child of the lineage? Child of the lineage means you, each one of us, me, you, anybody who makes a commitment that may I become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings. You become the child of the the, the lineage of the Buddhas. So, as a child of the lineage of Buddha, you should practice a professional wisdom. So, how should one practice a professional wisdom? This question asked by Shri Buddha to Arya on our behalf. So, this is the first part. Second part is, what is the response given by Arya Then, Arya explained emptiness in great detail. First, starting with the emptiness of the self, 
emptiness of aggregates, emptiness of vulnerable truths, emptiness of the, the 12 things of dependent origination, emptiness of the, the 5 aggregates, 12 sources, and the 18 elements. In great detail, emptiness of all these things were being explained. And then uh, the number three, what is the benefit if you follow the instruction as given by Arvalu Teshvara? So the benefit given said the Arvalu Teshvara concluded by saying, that if you follow this path, this is a path which leads you to the state of fearlessness, of no fear of any of the external factors. You become the enlightened one. It is only this wisdom of emptiness as the entrance gate, as the entrance that all the Buddhas of the past, present and future, of the three times, they, 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 they get into, into becoming enlightened. This only gate. So, this is a benefit and you'll experience the total fearlessness and infinite happiness. Okay, these are three points that we are not to miss as we recite the Han Sutra. Okay, together. I prestood to the Ari Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Buddha was dwelling on the mass of Vulture's mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also, at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadogiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of the Buddha, a venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravalukiteshvara. How should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom train? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravalukiteshvara said this to the venerable Shariputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, and composite factors in consciousness are empty. Shariputra likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unproduced, unseen, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no tongue, no uh, no composite factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation in the path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no known attainment. Shari Buddha, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the perfection the three times also manifest a complete awakening to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the professional wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the professional wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, should be known as truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the professional wisdom is declared, Deyatha Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Bodhisattva Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Buddha rose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravalukiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound professional wisdom just as you have indicated, even that the Tathagatas rejoice. The Buddha thus Having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharitvati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravadukiteshvara, who surrounded the entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised as spoken by the Buddha. <laughs> Sam Gade Bodhi Swahatyata Om Gade Gade Paragade Paragade 
संगद बोधि स्वा ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगद बोधि स्वा ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगद बोधि स्वा ओम गते गते पार गते पार संगद बोधि स्वा ओम गते गते पार गे पार संगद बोधि स्वा ओम गते गते पार गे पार संगद बोधि स्वा By the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing power of truth, may in and out of ignorance be transformed, may they be dispelled, may be the non-existent, may they be pacified, may all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified, may the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified, may we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dharma, may all enjoyments be in accord with the Dharma, may all species of perfect happiness pervade this place now. Okay, eight verses, my training, page thirty-five. <clears throat> uh, for the eight verses, my training. Um, yes, we have more detailed class for this. Um, more sessions are there for this uh, the teaching, but just for a uh, very quick, the um, the the background of this eight verses, my training, is that uh, you see that the. Um, um, Finally, the greatest meaning of one's life is twofold. One is the actual the liberating path. So, the path that we follow the is divided into two. One is the liberating path, and the others as referred to as the ripening paths. Uh, liberating path is the one where, like uh, the say for example the the X to cut the poison stream. That is the what actually cuts the, the tree, but for that we need the the carpent, we need the woodcutter, and that too the woodcutter should have a very stable hand, and the woodcutter should have you know the enough energy, and uh, the say the other factors must be there. But what actually cuts is the X. Likewise, what actually eradicates our mental defilements. Is the wisdom of emptiness. It is for this reason that the wisdom of emptiness is referred to as the liberate, only liberating path. The only liberating path is the wisdom of emptiness. Without this, we cannot do anything. So even if the woodcutter is there, who is extremely expert in cutting the tree with a very strong body, you can't do anything without X. So X is the one which actually cuts. But of course, it requires the help. It requires the aids of the other factors such as the woodcutter, his the expertise in cutting and so forth. But then what actually cuts is the X. So likewise, the wisdom of emptiness is what actually cuts it. That is the liberating path. And then the one which gives the energy to this wisdom, that is the bodhicitta. And this eight verse of mind training is primarily for the bodhicitta purpose. Meanwhile, the wisdom is also included towards the end. And um, the um, you see that the bodhicitta, when you look at it, you don't really see that uh, the, the verse is exclusively dedicated for bodhicitta. But you see that it is all about, say, the counteracting the negative force, the force which impedes the growth of bodhicitta, that is anger and ego. 
So this is primarily to subdue our ego and anger. Because these two are the ones. Where the ego is there, where you distance yourself from the bodhicitta. Where there's anger there, it. Some people, they're very short-tempered. Very short-tempered. Instantly, you know. So they say, both, both sides are laughing. And suddenly, just for a small word, instantly the person bursts into anger. I don't know how it happens. Yeah. So, but it happens. Um, so the anger, and some people, they're very good at heart. And superficially, instantly, the, the person becomes angry right there and then, very short-tempered. Um, so this, this anger is the one which actually pushes others away from you. And the bodhisattva is the one which embraces others. And uh, the, um, the with your practice of the bodhicitta every day, you are trying to extend your mind like the hands reaching out to others to embrace it. You put so much effort, hours and hours and hours, and then one short moment of the anger is good enough to simply the undo all the practice that you did of the bodhicitta. So the anger is the real enemy of the bodhicitta, and the the ego. This is extremely poisonous. It simply removes, nullifies the power of the bodhicitta very easily. So these eight verses are meant to. It, it, it when you read it, you may see that you make yourself so weak that I give the victory to you. I take the loss, the defeat on me, and uh, so you feel as though like so. It, it, it you may feel as though like it makes you so weak. No, that's not the point. It doesn't make you weak. It makes the self sadness attitude weak. Let us not mistake these two. Self and the self sadness attitude. This self is being made very strong. But ordinary people may read this to give the, uh, get the connotation that self is made weak. No. Self is made very strong. What is made weak is self sadness attitude. That is made weak. And because of this, this the potential mis this misunderstanding people may get through reading this. I deliberately added I deliberately added one verse from Lama Tsongkhapa. We said that in the end I added it after the eight verses. We said from my two collections, Vast the Space Out of a Master, from working with the effort of the practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha. It's not that I'll be the defeat I'll be, I'll accept the defeat, I'm the loser, you know, I've no hope. Not like that. I will become the chief leading Buddha, uh, Buddha for all those whose minds, wisdom, eyes, blind by ignorance. I will lead all beings. There's tremendous courage there. So this is what is supplemented. Actually, it doesn't require to be the added, but I added for to help many of the people who otherwise may uh, see these eight verses as you know to make you feel weak. Okay. <clears throat> With the determination to achieve the high aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which surpasses even the wish fulfilling gem, may hold them dear at all times. Whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the Louis the Mansal, and from the very depths of my heart, respectfully hold others as superior. In all my deeds, may I probe into my mind, and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I strongly confront them and avert them. When I see beings of unpleasant character, and those oppressed by strong negativity and suffering. May hold them dear, for they are rare to find, as if I have discovered a jewel treasure. When others are of jealousy, treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, and scorn. May I take upon myself the defeat, and offer to others the victory. When someone whom I have helped, or in whom I have placed great hopes, mistreats me in extremely hurtful ways, may I regard them still as my precious teacher. In brief, may I offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly. May I quietly take upon myself all hurts and pains of my mothers. May all these remain undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane concerns, and may I recognize all things as illusion, devoid of clinging, be released from bondage. From my two collections, vast space that I've amassed from working with that with the effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdomized blinded by ignorance. And next seven in puja. 
I bow down to the youthful Arema Jushri. You, the Buddhas, the lions amongst humans, gone to freedom in the present, past, and future, in the worlds of ten directions. To all of you who, with body, speech, and a sincere mind, I bow down. With the energy of aspiration for the Bodhisattva way, with a sense of deep respect, and with the many bodies as atoms of the world, to all you Buddhas visualized as real, I bow down. On every particle of Buddhas, numberless as atoms, each of is a host of Bodhisattvas, and I am confident the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with Buddhas in this way. With the infinite ocean of praise for you, and oceans of sound from the aspect of my voice, I sing the breathtaking excellence of Buddhas and celebrate all of you sagadas. Beautiful flowers and regal garlands, sweet music, scented walls and parasols, sparkling lights and sublime incense, I offer to you victorious ones, the Buddhas. Fine dress and fragrant perfumes, sandalwood powder heaped high as Mount Miru, all wondrous offerings, a spectacular array offered to you, victorious ones. With transcendent offerings, peerless and vast, with profound admiration for all the Buddhas, with strength of conviction in the Bodhisattva way, offer and bow down to all the victorious ones. Every harmful action I've done with my body, speech, and mind, overwhelmed by attachment and anger and confusion. All these are openly laid bare before you. I lift my heart and rejoice in all the merits of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in ten directions. Of solitary realizers here are still training in those beyond and of all ordinary beings. You who are the bright lights of worlds in ten directions, who have attained the Buddha's omniscience through the stages of awakening, all you who are my guides, please turn the supreme will of Dharma. With palms together, I earnestly recommend Quest, you who may actualize Pari Nirvana. Please stay with us for a- aeons, numberless as atoms of the world, for the happening, happiness of the well being of the wonder of wondrous in samsara. Whatever slight merit I may have accumulated by making prostrations, offering, confessing, rejoicing, and requ- requesting that the Buddha stay and teach, I now dedicate all this for the full awakening of all beings. Okay, mantle offering. <clears throat> This ground unwanted with perfumes, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. Oh, May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the Dharma. May I be blessed that my Dharma practice is on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is of freedom of flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. Becoming utterly frustrated with ignorance that grasp the true existence, please bless me to generate genuine renunciation, seeing all aspects of samsara is viciously repulsive. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious bodhicitta that cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of emptiness that does not see even an atom of intrinsic reality on a basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious wisdom of the non duality of bliss and emptiness. <laughs> Okay, now the roadmap, roadmap for our enlightenment, the complete picture, the complete road map, <coughs> the foundation of all good qualities by Lama Tsongkhapa, 
The foundation of all good qualities is the kind and perfect pure Guru. Correct devotion to Him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon Him with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. After that, just like a shadow follows the body, the results of virtues and non virtues come and follow. Finding firm and definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all virtuous deeds. Samsaric splendors are unsatisfying and unreliable. Seeking them is the door to all suffering. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Led by this pure thought, mindfulness, alertness, and great caution arise. Root of the teaching in keep, is keeping the Pradhi Moksha vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so have all mother migratory beings. Please bless me to see this train in Supreme Bodhicitta and bear the responsibility to free migratory beings. Even if I develop Bodhicitta but I don't practice the three types of morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the Buddhist other vows with great energy. Once I have pacified distraction to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to generate quickly within my mind stream a unified path of come about in special insight. Having become a pure vessel by training the general path, Please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme voyager of vehicle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows and samaya. As I become firmly convinced of this, please bless me to protect these vows and pleasures like my life. Then, having realized the importance of the two stages, the essence of Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions, please bless me to realize the teachings of the holy Guru. Like that, may the Guru who showed noble path, and a spiritual friends who practice it of long lives. Please bless me to pacify completely, all out any inner hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, I enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the qualities of the stations and the paths that could attain the state of Vajratara. <coughs> okay, we'll recite this. First, we'll read the meaning of the mantra, Mixama Mantra. Praise to Lama Sukhaba. You are a Valukateshvara, great treasure of non-referential compassion, a magistry, master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, destroy hosts of demons without exception. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the sages, land of s- snow, love Santa, where do you feed and make prostrations? <coughs> <laughs> to make and Yeah. 
Okay, now uh, in Tibetan is known as Tamjie Nejo Gyeba. This is actually extracted from uh, the, the part of practice of uh, the Tantra, Hajjuga Tantra. But we, uh, the, this, because that, that is extremely the precious one, I extracted this to be practiced, to include as the main practice. Okay, so this constitutes of the four parts. The four parts. The first one is single part of meditation. Number two is renunciation. Number three is bodhicitta. Number four is wisdom and emptiness. Okay, the first, the single part of meditation, which we, uh, yesterday we already explained this, and uh, the quickly, the body posture, and the focal point. For the focal point, if you have any questions later on, um, you feel free to bring them in your group discussions as well as to me in the class. Pretend to the meditation as well. Um, where the say, body should be upright and should not lean, lean against the support is very important. And for a long term meditator, then the cross leg position is extremely important. And uh, then the hot, your head tilted for a little bit, your eyes not closed. Never close your eyes. Later on, when you really become good at meditation, then at that point, uh, you can see. But I, sometimes you can do that with eyes open, eyes closed. No difference for you at that point. Not now. The tr preferably always do the meditation with eyes open. And uh, and yes, so the others is fine. So these two other things most important. Thing, number one is the back one upright and the eyes not closed. Then the uh, for meditation, the say for example, what is in front of me? The cloth is extremely colorful. For meditation, it is good that the, the what is in front of you should not be too colorful. It can distract your mind. And, and the movement shouldn't be the air. Movement, for example, with the fan. So the, the cloth, it moves like this. This is very disturbing. And then the sound, it's a, in the text, it said the, the sound of the rivers. Particularly the very forceful rivers. But very gentle rivers also oh, fine. Gentle river, you know. The, the sound of very gentle, it soothes you, but then some of the, they are very forceful. So this should be avoided. And then the, the sound of the clock, ticking sound of the clock, tick, 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 this intermittent sound, this extremely disturbing nowadays, uh, the, the soundless clocks available. Um, even the, I don't know whether this is digital, it should not have the sound, otherwise the analog. Some of the analog, they are with sound. Some of them are without sound. So the I try to go for the ones without sound. When you become really expert in meditation, where you can your mind can just go into the uh, the whatever object that you are to meditate, single pointedly. When you reach to that level, then the external sound does not really matter. It doesn't matter anything. So you you just but when you go to gade gade paragade level. When you reach that level, but they, you go into the meditation, non dual visual emptiness, then all your sense consciousness, they shut down, including ear consciousness, eye consciousness, they shut down. Although your eyes are wide open, but your eye consciousness is not operating. So at that point, no external factors can affect you. Until that point, right? But they don't think that I might have reached that level, right? I mean, meaning each one of us. I might have, who knows, I might have this. If you doubt this, you have not raised. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the sound, that ticking sound, tick, 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 this is intermittent sound. These are extremely harmful to your meditation. They affect you badly. So that is a smooth sound, like the, the fan. It's very smooth, it's fine. But if it does affect you, then stop it. Okay, so these are some of the tips. Good, ready. Okay, then the what you meditate. So yesterday I explained it to the quickly remind you of that. Uh, there are so many versions of the meditation. 
at the so you don't you don't say that what other people are doing is wrong what we learn something from very standard text no say the as long as it's coming from a tra the good tradition it's fine there are hundreds and thousands of meditate the uh, the meditation focal points for example if you read Arya Sangha yes I mentioned this Arya Sangha's and the Shrivaka Bhumi Nyantukesa Shrivaka Bhumi so there you see the many uh, the you say the, the objects of meditation are indicated many many even the breath so many versions were taught so what we do is we do a very simple one we just count the breath we don't follow breath through your right nostril going down and through the central channel coming out we don't do that we just count the breath breathe in breathe out say oh why not we do the complicated one if you want to do complicated, you can do later on. First, gain some degree of expertise in this meditation. Breath in, breath out. Cycle one. Breath in, breath out. Cycle one. Just count the breath. And then the, the multitasking. When you count the breath, see if you can do the multitasking. Visualize a tiny white dot like this. See, some people find it difficult to do the meditation to do the visualization tiny white dot circular tiny white dot like this okay this is what you should be doing while counting the breath these two things should happen together and if you find it difficult after like one week two weeks then you can drop one of them you can do you can focus only one part then the next part is identify the errors of it. this is the most important thing Many people they they say that okay I started doing meditation. How long? I do for one hour. This is absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. You're building a very bad habit. So say so when you start the meditation, if you are a beginner, don't do it for more than two minutes. But here collectively in gathering and the say in, in group. We can do it for like five minutes, fine, because psychologically you are affected by the other people. They will keep you alert. But when you're by yourself, on your own, then five minutes is pretty long. And it can easily make you go into sleep or schedule in the mind. So for that matter, that when you're by yourself, then do it just like 21 cycles. 21 cycles is like one and a half minutes. And you give a short break. The text says, in the beginning, short sessions, more number of sessions in the beginning, like one and a half minutes. Give a short break, like a few seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Again, you resume. Again, give a short break. Again, three times, five times a day, or three times in the morning, three times in the evening. When you're good at when you become good at it, don't be too excited. When you become good at it, continue it for like one, one week, two weeks. For like two weeks, you become good at it. Then you extend it to five minutes, and you will see difference. In five minutes, by the time you are about to finish, you will see the scattering comes, mental laxity comes. Again, practice it. When you do well, don't just jump to ten minutes. Continue this, st stabilize this for the next another one week or two weeks. If it goes well, then you can. I make it like 10 minutes so this is how the quality should not be compromised there must be emphasis on the quality if you don't really say sometimes what happens is that when you do meditation and you have the focus the focus is there and you see that your mind is a little lax physically you feel a little lax a little lax and your mind starts to sink and then you don't want to get up you don't want to you know you don't want to uh, the say uh, apply to make yourself more fresh you don't want to do that just do that and to continue the meditation this is a very bad habit you are building a very bad habit and if that becomes a habit um, the warning is given that and um, this can accumulate in this accumulate laxity in your mind and this laxity can become a big tendency Habitual tendency in mind, and this can cause one to take birth as animals. This one given by the great teachers. So, when your mind becomes legs, 
then don't worry don't fear don't be afraid that okay now my mind feels less and i may take birth the animal realm no only when you accumulate this as a tendency a natural tendency and accumulate it for an extended period of time this is what happens so therefore on the okay later on we're going to uh, explain more on this particularly with the Mahamudra meditation where observing the mind this is a very complicated thing and um, the if you're not too careful so the, I'm going to teach how to do this practice but not for you to practice it right for you to learn oh so this is how the mind works this is what the mind looks like I have never seen my mind but now this is how I can discover my mind you know that in the process keep learning more about psychology Buddhist psychology we I call it Buddhist psychology because people when psychology people instantly move to the to the Freudian psychology for the Freud's psychology which is very different so you, why I call it Buddhist psychology is because that when it's psychology there's no word psychology then people move to with the people think about Freud psychology so actually is empirical psychology psychology which actually you can experience you can feel you can see what's going on in your mind you can see that it's not that, that you have to believe it's something you can see so the we're going to learn about this and then meanwhile from your side I say the if possible try to, to study psychology more and then in the process there's although we do find separate books for psychology uh, for what we study what we use in the Manasseh universities so if you ask if you ask the when when is this are these books used at the beginner level when you enter the, the the monastery the first year second year you study that which means that in a way this psychology while it is extremely profound at the same time many of the important aspects of the psychology are not covered in this book so how do we learn those aspects so those aspects we learn gradually not like is when you look for gold i say is in some rivers you find the gold you, you know how the gold is gathered don't expect that so you go there and suddenly you find lots of gold there no the sand just comes down through the river and then you keep the sieber collect the sand and you keep doing like this and a very small piece of gold you find this is how you gather the gold likewise you study Acharya Chandra this text then you, there's a mention of some mention of this psychologist there which you don't find in the uh, the, the standard psychology book which is used for the the beginners and then you study the Acharya um, Vasubandhu's Abhidhamma Kosh again you see say the, the psychology the concept of the, the, the teaching psychology is scattered here and there again you gather so in fact um, we, uh, we compiled one short book on psychology and in the end I included 24 points which I gathered from the various sources about psychology which you don't find mentioned in the, <coughs> the standard psychology book which are used by the beginners in the monastery universities okay so in other words what I'm saying is that the Mahamudra they study psychology well and the from the various sources you try to learn how the mind works and then observe your own mind to see what you've studied there is it well reflected within you and then when you see them when you start to see the mind pretty well then you are entitled to the practice otherwise it can be very dangerous because the mind is something which is really intangible you can't really see that only through experience through fast learning through experience then you start to to see what the mind is like it's extremely fine like very fine glass fine glass between you and me you will not be particularly when your mind is in haste you will not see the glass so our mind is always at haste our mind always focus on external objects when our mind is external it's a very gross and the glass is very subtle so the mind is extremely subtle that you don't see it because not because that it doesn't exist because that 
you are so addicted to seeing the gross the sort of objects it is like tasting you know somebody who who takes a lot of salt a lot of salt when there is like you say 20 percent salt then one day you eat the food with the two percent salt you will not you will say there's no salt in it you cannot taste the salt there other people can taste the salt not because there is no salt because your intake of the salt is too much that the two percent is too small for you that it is not visible to you so likewise our mind is so subtle and how our mind is in, engaged with external objects distracted with external objects cross so therefore it cannot feel the mind itself okay um that's a little digression okay now um the um this is the the focal point the breath and the uh, the tiny dot and then the next part is the uh, the errors mental laxity and mental excitement these two errors are something that we must be very careful to keep the watch over and when these two things happen apply the remedies introspection and mindfulness okay ready five minutes <coughs>
Okay, next is renunciation. Oh, for the renunciation, we use the four seals, and it's going to be guided meditation. Are you ready? <coughs> ready? This is going to be analytical meditation where your mind should be very actively um, operating. <clears throat> follow the instructions and see how much you can invoke the and uh, the meanings and experiences to the best you can the renunciation it means to renounce your miseries not to renounce your happiness but to renounce your miseries to renounce your miseries we need to know how to renounce the causes of miseries for the buddha taught he dharma he do prabhava all these phenomena, particularly the phenomena of miseries, they arise from causes. And the Buddha identified in terms of the root of the causes. <clears throat> Buddha identified the the four cognitive errors. Also referred to as the four misconceptions. Misconceiving impermanent phenomena as permanent, misconceiving impure phenomena as pure, misconceiving uh, the miseries as happiness and misconceiving selfless nature as of selfhood nature. <clears throat> uh, to remove the first misconception of Buddha taught, all composite things are impermanent. Impermanence is of two kinds, gross and subtle. It is very important for us to begin with the meditation on the gross impermanence. Your beautiful days of the past are gone now. Your youth, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, is gone now. This will never come back. Yes. And many of the people who are so loving and caring to you in the past, many of them are gone. Yes, from this point of view, we do see as so like the world is so gloomy. We have to know these facts. 200 years ago, there were people, of course, less than 8, 8 billion human beings on this earth, perhaps the 5 billion or 4 billion human beings. And they, they also, like your age, some younger, some older, and the parents having so much expectation, the children and the children likewise having so much of expectation in their life to do some start a career. And today, where are these people? They're all gone. Whether the expectations are fulfilled or not fulfilled, they're all gone. Nothing's left. From the only handful of people like Buddha, Jesus Christ, and only helpful people are remembered. What about your great 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 grandparents? What about your ancestors? No clue where they're from. This is this becomes a remote history, the past. Likewise, two two hundred years from now in the future, all these eight billion human beings, not even a single person is left. Who are going to be left there? Hundred percent sure. This is impermanence, and all these merriments. Yes, we have to have the experience the beautiful Christmas days, likewise New Year, Diwali, and so forth. All these beautiful ceremonies of the past—they're all gone. And this impermanence, where the continuum stop, is quite scary for us to think of. This impermanence, underscoring this impermanence, is this subtle impermanence, momentariness. The changes that the change that you see in, in ten years is because of the change that you see in every uh, the the year, and the change that you see in the year is because of the change that you see in the month, week. 
days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds. In reality, the external world and the internal world of your mind, they're all, given that they're all composite phenomena, they move at such a fast pace on the level of the nanosecond. So fast. Yes, we do know this intellectually, but experientially, it's good for us to reflect on this by first starting to press the timer on a mobile, press the stoppage on a mobile, and see how these digits move so fast. And think more, reflect more, take your time to reflect on and do some retreat. One day retreat, two day retreats, just to manage your impermanence. You'll start to feel this impermanence within you, impermanence within the world. Extremely scary. This reality we are, we are discovering. And this impermanence moves so fast. What is it if, if things move so fast? Yes, of course. If you experience it, you will have a sense of fear. Like you being thrown in a very fast moving train. What do you feel? There's tremendous fear coming to you. Why fear? The faster the train moves, the more the fear. The, the, is, the more the transient nature that you see of yourself and of the world, you will feel more scared. Where is this impermanence taking me? And like a train, where this train takes you, whether to a picked spot or to a slaughterhouse, is all determined by the uh, the driver. In our case, the driver is a mind. And unfortunately, the driver is under the dictate, under the control of the, the true terrorist, self-grasping, ignorant, self-centered attitude. As long as we are under the sway of these two contaminations, we always end up in miseries, and the worst of which is self-grasping ignorance. The contamination of self-grasping ignorance, uh, complemented by the wisdom of, uh, complemented by the self-centered attitude, will give rise to all sorts of shoots in the form of attachment, anger, jealousy, fear, and so forth. And then it's subtle stains, giving subtle stains manifest in the form of carnival obscurations. So as long as we are under the sway of this contamination, self-grasping ignorance and of shoots, we'll never be happy. We only end up in miseries. And in our life we can see that experientially. We see that we are, we end up with so much of miseries, one of the other, one of the other, one of the other. Misery is like what? Sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish and so forth. And these miseries, one moment of such a tragedy, the misery is good enough to nullify all the past moments of the merriments, festivities, birthday parties, and the ceremonies and so forth. You will see that all these things of the past, they were just so shallow, meaningless and gloomy. This is a meaning of contaminated things. All what is contaminated is of self nature. That's very true, I understand it. The more you reflect on this, the more dissolution you will you will be of samsara and the self grasping ignorance and self centered attitude. Is there a way out? Yes. Unless until we put effort, it will never come to an end on its own. These miseries will never come to an end on its own. I don't expect these miseries coming to an end. The winter manner in which twenty twenty one came to an end automatically. Um, there's a third class of impermanent phenomena which come to an end only when you put it only with the exerted effort, concerted effort, without which it never come to an end on its own. So what kind of effort is required? So knowing that these are all rooted to self grasping ignorance, we need to counteract the self grasping ignorance by introducing the light of the wisdom. What kind of wisdom? And the wisdom by the definition is defined as a discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tells with reality. What's the reality? The reality is that everything is like a dream. Just wake up and your fears will dissolve. Know the reality by waking up and the fears will dissolve.
Okay, so this reality, that everything is like a dream, is what the Buddha taught is the third seal. Everything is the nature of emptiness, selflessness. Emptiness meaning that there's nothing really there as intrinsically different from the object to be identified. Selflessness means there's nothing to be identified there as the parts to be identified as intrinsic one with the, the object that you're identifying. In other words, there's nothing from the object there as truly real. It's all like dream, project by your own mind. How do you know this? Okay. What are you doing? I'm meditating. What is your body doing? My body is in meditative posture. And how does this self appear to you? Like a dream that your mind is projecting it? Or that it takes a so solidified objective right there, nothing to do with my, my mental projection? Of course, in the second way, it appears so solid, so solid, so objectified, and that they nothing as a projection by my mind. This belief is the deception. This belief is self-grasping their ignorance. How do I know this? If this belief is correct, that the self should exist as object real, nothing to do with the mind. And on the contrary, the way the Arinagajan indicated, if the mirage were to be water, one of those close by the mirage see water, with a similar token of reasoning. If the self would exist objectively, why don't I see the self as I go closer to its object? Okay, now let us go closer to its object. The mind which goes closer to its object is known as ultimate analysis. We employ this ultimate analysis to see if this self does exist objectively. Employing this ultimate analysis, by growing, going closer to its object, the self's object, anything which you see as not the self, let us just ignore that. Okay, first what we see is just a thin layer of the skin. Behind that, the fatty tissues, the muscles, the cartilages, the flesh, the bones, the heart, the lungs, the spleen, gallbladder, the stomach, intestine, kidneys. So of all these sort of parts, none of these is uh, to identify this intrinsically the, the, the self. These constitute the element of earth. In other words, the element of earth is, is not to be identified as intrinsically one with the self. Next element of water. Element of water. Uh, the four, four liters of the blood which is pumped in and out by the heart to different parts of the body. Of course, that is not to be identified as intrinsically the self. Element of fire. 2,500 joules of energy that your body has. Of course, that is not a bad identified as interest to one with this, one with this, one with the self. And, and the space. 99.99% of the body is vacuum in nature. But of course, I'm not the space. Space vacuum in nature. I'm a solid person. But then the element of air. 4.6 liters of air that we breathe in and out through your lungs. Of course, that is not me. What is left now? Element of consciousness or the element of mind. I'm a, I'm a, the, as my friends can see me. They cannot see my mind. And I'm a male. I'm a female. And the mind does not the gender. So therefore, this mind is not mind or the consciousness, not the self. Keep it aside. Okay, now what do you see? None of these six elements is identified as intrinsic one with the one with the self. So if the self is not about identified as one with the the six elements, then see if it can be identified as separate from the intrinsically separate from the six elements. Keeping aside six elements, what is there? Nothing is left there. Stay in this experience for a while. Okay, if at all something is there from the object, there is either six elements or separate from six elements. And none of these two holds true to be identified as the self. Where is the self from the object now? From the object, there's nothing to be identified as self. Stay in this experience for a while. This is the experience of the space-like emptiness. 
This is the third seal. Everything is in nature, emptiness and selflessness. Okay, that's wonderful. But what's the benefit of this meditation? Yes, just as this self dissolves, just this self dissolves in experience of the emptiness. If you subject your sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish, and so forth, to the same analysis, you say that they will also dissolve. Your sorrows dissolve. Your miseries dissolve. In the experience of this emptiness, you, you transcend sorrow. The moment the sorrow transcends, instantly you will feel your mind so uplifted with lightness and joy and peace. This is the fourth seal. Transcending sorrow is absolute peace. You transcend all the sorrows. This is amazing. So precious. Wishing to attain this state, the experience of emptiness, where all your sorrow, where all your sorrow is transcended, this wish, this aspiration, is the most refined version of understanding of renunciation. Wanting to renounce the miseries in the experience of emptiness, where all the miseries and sorrows tran is transcended, dissolves. May I experience this emptiness where all my sorrow is transcended. It's for this reason that Nirvana is explained by Prasangika in the context of emptiness. This is the reason. With understanding of renunciation, understand Nirvana as explained by the lower schools. They are very they are very gross as compared to how it is explained by Prasangika. Okay, slowly come out and take a few seconds rest before we switch to Bodhicitta. You ready? But I should will do the uh, the first two immeasurables, immeasurable loving kindness and immeasurable compassion. <coughs> For the Buddhist practice, we really need to invoke the blessings of all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. It's not that easy. So there is reinforce the visualization of all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in the space in front of you. So loving and caring and supporting and blessing us with a smile on the face. The way the mother smiles at a very young, tender child. And you're surrounded by your two parents, your children, and all dear mother sentient beings living on the other side. Immeasurable love and kindness. How good would it be that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. The causes of happiness primarily consisting of the wisdom of emptiness and the unconditional love of bodhicitta. May all my dear mother sentient beings be endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. I will take the responsibility that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness. The Buddhists and Bodhisattvas witnessing that you make such a courageous commitment, they are intensely happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke their omniscient minds to send for nectar and very soothing lights to assume you and all dear mother sentient beings. They may touch the lights and nectars with the bodies and be yours. 
instills in all happiness and the cause of happiness within you and all temporal beings. And you are witnessing such a miracle is happening towards you and all temporal sentient beings. You are intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sighing with relief. Immeasurable compassion. <clears throat> How good would it be that all my dear medicine beings are freed from suffering and the causes of suffering, causes of suffering like contaminant karmas, afflictions, inappropriate attention, and the self grasping ignorance, and alongside the self centered attitude. May all my dear medicine beings. Be freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. I will take the responsibility that all my dear mother Sushin beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddhist and Bodhisattvas, witnessing that you make such a courageous commitment, they are intensely happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke their compassionate omniscient minds to send the negative. Nectars and soothing lights towards you and ultimate sentient beings. The mere touch of the lights and nectars with the body springs are yours. Watches over all the miseries and the cause of miseries from you and from all ultimate sentient beings. And you witness such a miracle is happening towards all the ultimate sentient beings. You are intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sign with relief. Underscore all the four measurables is the unconditional love towards all beings. Abide in this experience with this unconditional love, imagining that you are looking, looking at the eyes of each of the sentient beings with so much love and affection to the extent that each one of these sentient beings, they feel themselves just so special in your eyes. This unconditional love, let us, with full intents, let us make the commitment of Bodhicitta. I'll say this line of Bodhicitta commitment three oh, one, um, once, and then we'll all say this three times together. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. <laughs> Slowly transform this most beautiful mind in this universe, the Bodhicitta, into a spotless, clean moon disk, white moon disk, horizontally sitting with the heart. Okay, that's amazing that you made such a courageous commitment to become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings. But how do you know that you can become a Buddha? No matter how much you squeeze a handful of sand, no oil come out of that. Yes, that's true, but but I'm not like a handful of sand instead of I'm like a handful of sunflower seeds, squeezing which oil does come out. In my case, there's a Buddha nature within me, which can manifest in the form of Buddha. But why? How come that that you you this it did not this Buddha nature did not manifest in the form of Buddhahood since time immemorial till now? Yes, it's all because that I'm totally being deceived by these two demons. 
self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude. Today I'm disillusioned by these two, and henceforth I will put every effort to exterminate the two demons. What kind of effort? And the liberating path, which is the wisdom of the wisdom to see the ultimate reality, to cut this ignorance altogether. So what is this wisdom? Let us quickly retrieve the experience of the emptiness which we um, meditated as the third third seal. What are you doing? I'm meditating. And subjecting this self to ultimate analysis, you see the six elements. Okay, let us just scan through the body, scan through the self, and look at these six elements. Earth, the water, fire, air, space and consciousness okay so now you have to come too close to this object by subjecting this self to other open analysis you end up seeing the six elements which of the six elements is to be identified as intrinsically one with the self none none of these is to be identified as intrinsically one with the self okay then see if the self exists intrinsically different from the six elements remove the six elements what is left Nothing is left there. Now from the object you've done, you have come too close to this object. Where is the self to be identified as object real? Nothing to be identified as, identif uh, as the object real self. Stay in this experience. The non-affirming negative experience of this self dissolve in this ultimate, in eyes of ultimate analysis. Stay in this experience. Okay, this is the most fearless mind that exists in this universe. And slowly transform this fearless mind of the wisdom of emptiness into a spotless, clean white Vajra, thumb sized white Vajra, vertically sitting on the moon to see your heart. Okay, that's amazing that you have the moon symbolizing conventional bodhicitta to exterminate the self centered attitude. And a Vajra symbolizing the ultimate Bodhisattva, the wisdom of emptiness, non-dual wisdom of emptiness of the Bodhisattvas to cut the afflictive obscurations and the cognitive obscurations both. It's amazing that now it guarantees that you become you're going to become fully enlightened Buddha. But what about my dear mother sentient beings, my two parents, children, all the family members, all oh, dear mother sentient beings? Yes, that's very true. Out of great compassion, um, the, this great compassion within the triggered within you, invoke this Russian moon with the air of heart to multiply infinite number of times. She one set of the Russian moon at the heart of your mother, one set with your dad at his heart, one set with each one of your children. With each one of your family members, with each one of the sentient beings, human beings, animals, insects, hungry ghosts, health beings, garden goddesses, spirits, and so forth in France, in the world, in the entire Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe. Okay, I'm so glad today. I now see that all the sentient beings living on the side with this Vajra Moon at heart, guaranteeing that. I'm going to save all of them, take them to the state of ultimate freedom, ultimate Buddhahood. That's amazing. Let's not forget that all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, they're watching us. Why not we invite them to be the guest and also the witness to undertaking the aspiration, the undertaking the ceremony of aspiration, taking the aspiration Bodhisattva vow. As a gesture, making the request to all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas to be the guest and the witness to our the, the ceremony, taking the and the Espirit Bodhisattva vow, along with all the ascension beings, let us slowly stand to make three prostrations to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas.
Okay, see if you can sit on the right knees. English page 50. Okay, um, so um, what is important is that this is the actual ceremony of taking the aspiration of Bodhisattva vow. We are very fortunate. So the, the meanings, I'm not going to, I already explained this yesterday. By the way, is there anybody who was absent yesterday morning? Raise your hands. Okay, one, two, okay, two, okay, three. So the I'll quickly explain this today. And oh yeah. Uh, the for those who were absent yes, and then those who were present. This is like uh, to refresh your mind of these of the verses. The first verse is extremely important and in fact the we're using this as a preliminary practice, but you can use this as an actual practice. Actual practice to invoke and to take the expression Bodhisattva vow. And some people who already received the the full fledged Bodhisattva vow, uh, they can use this as the, the verse to, to reinforce the Bodhisattva vow. Okay, so the, uh, the first verse is extremely comprehensive. Um, we are taking this vow to say that I am going to become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings. In other words, you are you are committing to take a journey towards Buddhahood. And this journey is the most noble journey and oftentimes nobler the goal, more the obstacles are there. So for that matter, we need a great support. And the greatest support for this journey is the Triple Gem, Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. The first line says, I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. And um, the, then the, for the journey, the road must be very clear. If the road is blocked by the fallen trees, boulders, and so forth, then you cannot undertake the journey. The road must be clear, and the road is none other than your own mind. You must be clear, your mind must be clear of the obstacles such as the, the negativities, negative karmas, acute negative karmas, afflictions, and so forth. And the best way by which to minimize them is by confessing the negativities. So, the second line says, I confess the negativities individually. So, once the road, looks, road is clear, but if the car does not have the inner fuel, again, we cannot undertake the journey. The car is none other than only your mind, and this mind requires a tremendous fuel of the uh, merit, merit accumulation. So the best way by which to do so is by rejoicing the virtues and the merits of the other beings and yourself. Re rejoice the virtues of Buddhists, Bodhisattvas, and all the other the beings, enlighten, unenlighten yourself. And the third line says, I rejoice in virtues of all the beings. Okay, now here you have the great support of the triple gem. The road is clear. Your car is in a fuel. What kind of journey are you going to undertake? I'm going to take that. I'm going to undertake the journey of Buddhahood. I'm going to become Buddha. That is my destination. So the fourth line says, I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. Okay, let's say this three times, three times together. Wholeheartedly. I go for refuge to the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. I go for refuge to the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. I go for refuge to the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. Two or three times. Okay. Uh, the next two verses are um, the actual ceremony. We invoke the Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas to pay heed to us. And then the first verse is that the how can I become Buddha? Uh, for that, we seek the example, role model, Buddha Shakyamuni, and all the, the past Buddhas as our role models, and how they succeeded, how they succeeded in, in this journey. Uh, uh, through uh, uh, by two means, 
The first one, the first factor is the factor of generating a very strong motivation of the bodhicitta. They generate a very strong motivation, very spontaneous bodhicitta. May I become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings as a very powerful motivation. And to materialize this aspiration that they generated, they engage in the Bodhisattva practices. And this is how they become Buddha now. So if this is how they become the Buddha, then I will follow the footsteps. I will also generate very strong. The second verse is I will also generate very strong bodhicitta, spontaneous bodhicitta, and uh, then to materialize this aspiration, I will also engage in the bodhisattva practices, six perfections, and four perfections making ten. Okay, let's say this together. When you say this, imagine that all beings are with you, and you are like the you as the eldest child, like age ten, twelve. And you are encouraging all your younger siblings to be with you to undertake this the very important journey. And all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, like your parents, they are watching us. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as the previous Buddhas have generated the mind of Bodhicitta, uh, just as they successively dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the mind of Bodhicitta. And Lava Shala to successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as the previous Buddhas have generated the Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, likewise for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the Mother Bodhicitta and Lava Shala to successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please pay heed to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Mother Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, Says, likewise, for the benefit of all sentient beings, I will generate the mother bodhicitta and I want to successfully follow the bodhisattva practices. Okay, feel the joy over having received the aspirin bodhisattva vow. Feel this joy. And the Buddhist bodhisattvas, they are so proud of you for you having done immense and the, the task. You have extracted a great meaning of meaning of your life today, which we never did before in the past lives. The Buddhist Bodhisattva, they are so, so proud of you. This pride and, pride and happiness of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas invoke the Vajra Muni at their hearts to multiply infinite number of times. Like rain shower, they descend to merge with the one that visualize at your heart, thereby becoming non dual, stabilized, and blessed. Likewise, like in like rain shower, they descend to merge with the one that visualizes the heart of your mother, heart of your father, your each one of your children, each of the the dearest mother sentient beings, humans, human beings, animals, insects, hunters, helpings here in France, in the world, in the Milky Way galaxy, in the entire universe, thereby becoming non dual, stabilized, and blessed. Okay, this is the greatest meaning of your life, and today you extracted this meaning and this greatest gift that you can possibly think of offering, making the, the to the sentient, your dear mother sentient beings, and this is the gift. And this is the greatest offering that you can think of making to all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, this greatest gift. Yes, you, you are today offering this, and this is all happening because of the blessings of the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. As just to thank all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, Along with all the ascension beings, let us slowly stand and make three prostrations to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Okay, English page 51. This is uh, this verse is for us to connect 
In this life, we are already connected with the teacher on bodhicitta and teaching wisdom emptiness. But for us to be connected with the same teaching in the next life, we include this in a form of very powerful prayer. Let's say this three times together. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicittas even at the cost of my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicittas even at the cost of my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the two precious bodhicittas even at the cost of my life. In order to further increase this bodhicitta from now on, those with discernment who have lucidly seized and awakened a mind of bodhicitta in this way should highly praise it in the following manner. Today my life has borne fruit. Having well obtained this human existence, I have been born in the family of the Buddha and now when one of the Buddha's children. Thus whatever actions I do from now on must be in accord with the family. Never shall I disgrace or pollute this noble and unsullied race. Just like a blind person discovering a jewel in Hebrew rubbish, likewise by some coincidence an awakening mind has been born within me. It is the supreme ambrosia that overcomes the sovereignty of death. It is the inexhaustible treasure that eliminates the all poverty in the world. It is the supreme medicine that quells the world's disease. It is the tree that shelters all beings wandering and tired on the path of conditioned existence. It is the universal bridge that leads to freedom from unhappy states of birth. It is the dawning moon of the mind that dispels the torment of disturbing conceptions. It is the great sun that finally removes the misty ignorance of the world. It is the quintessence of butter from the channel of the milk of Dharma. For all those guests traveling on the path of conditioned existence who wish to experience the bounties of happiness, this will satisfy them with joy and actually place them in supreme bliss. Today, in the presence of the protectors, I invite the world to be guests at the festival temper and ultimate delight. May gods, demigods, and all be joyful. Okay, that is prayer. I dedicate the merit thus gathered to the realization that is in the prayers of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas for three times and to the upholding of the doctrine of description inside. May in all lives through the force of this merit, never separate from the four wheels of the Mahayana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, perfect in the two stages. From our two collections, vast space that have amassed, from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom is planted by ignorance. Tiyotam gati gati Pada gati Parasam gade bodhisvahatyata Om gade gade Paragade Parasam gade bodhisvahatyata Om gate gate Pada gate Pada sam gate bodhisvaha Okay, three processes together. <coughs> 